Let's take a look at what it means for a T procedure to be robust. An inference procedure is robust if probability calculations remain fairly accurate even when a condition is violated. In other words, if we construct 95% confidence intervals, then about 95% of the intervals should capture the true value of the population parameter. Let's use Fathom to help us answer this question. Is a t-interval robust against non-normality? Here I have a distribution that is clearly skewed to the right. Its mean is 1.99266 and there are 10,000 values in this distribution. Let's start by collecting a sample of values or a sample of cases from this distribution. I actually want to take a sample size of 5, so let's take care of that. Try again. We can see that we do have 5 cases here. Oh, let's try that again. Let's actually click on the sample of cases and look at the cases. We can see the values here range from uh, 3.9 all the way down to 0 0.018. And let's create a confidence interval using these five values. So I drag an estimate on to my desktop here and I'm going to estimate the mean and I want to actually use these values. We can see our sample size is 5 our sample mean is 2.09, our sample standard deviation is 1.4, our standard error, which is the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, is 0.63, and our interval is about 0.33 to 3.85. So this particular interval does contain the true value of the mean, which is 1.99266. Um, if you right-click on this, you can change this to be the non-verbose form of the uh, interval. Um, let's actually collect or create several intervals. Right now I only have one confidence interval, but I want to create several confidence intervals. So here we've created actually five different confidence intervals. We have our, our sample mean, our lower bound, our upper bound, um, and some other measures that were collected here. Let's actually inspect the collection and change this to be collecting another 95 measures. So that we have a total of 100 different confidence intervals. We can see there's 100 values here. Let's actually take a look at what is in this collection. We can see, as I mentioned earlier, that we have a, a sample mean of the five values that were sampled, the lower confidence bound, the upper confidence bound, the confidence width, the sample standard deviation, the standard error, the degrees of freedom is four because our sample size was five and we would do five minus one. The uh, data that we were collecting was from this attribute called value um, the confidence level was 95% and our sample size was 5. Well, what we want to do without having to look at the values here is use Fathom to help us figure out if 1.99266 is between the lower bound and the upper bound. So we're going to create this new attribute called Capture. And I'll right click on this to edit the formula. And I want it to say, yes, true, you have caught um, the true value, the population mean, um, if the value 1.99266 is between the lower bound and the upper bound. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use Boolean logic. I want to have the lower confidence bound be smaller than the mean of 1.99266 and at the same time I want the upper, confiden up, upper confidence bound to be um, bigger than 1.99266. We'll say okay and we see there's some trues and falses. Let's take a look at this false one here since that seems to be a little different. Um, is this interval over here 0.21 to 1.62 does this interval contain 
the true value of the population mean, which was 1.99. No, it doesn't. So that makes sense that that says false. Um, rather than having uh, Fathom uh, or having us count up the trues and falses ourselves, let's create a summary table, table and have Fathom do that for us. I'll drag capture down here and see that 89% of the co confidence intervals captured the truth. And our, comp our capture rate should be closer to 95% since these were 95% confidence intervals. Now you might be saying, well, maybe this particular one or this particular time uh, we were unlucky. Uh, I bet if we did this again with a different group of 100 confidence intervals, we'd be closer to the 95% here. Well, let's do that again and find out. I'll go here to inspect collection. Over here to collect measures. Let's collect 100 measures, creating once again 100 confidence intervals. We'll replace what's there and say collect more measures. And we'll see again, not close to 95%, 83% of the intervals captured the truth. Let's try again. Maybe we were unlucky again. Oh, whoa, that's worse, 78%. I don't know. I don't think this, this is working out very well. These are definitely not 95% confidence intervals. Well, this one was close, 93%. It's still not a 95% confidence interval. We can see in the long run that these intervals are not robust. They are, uh, do not hold true. Uh, we would expect 95% confidence intervals to capture the truth 95% of the time, and these don't. That's because this distribution is strongly skewed.